Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Ramco Systems Limited Q3 FI22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Dam Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anmol Garg from DAM Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Inba. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of DAM Capital Advisors, we welcome you all to Q3 FY22 conference call of Ramco Systems. We have with us Mr. P. R. Venkatraman Raja, Chairman of the company, Mr. Sandesh Bilagi, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. R. Ravi Kula Chandran, CFO. Ms. Gayatri, VP Finance, and Mr. Vijay Raghavan, Company Secretary. So, uh, without any further ado, I'll hand over the call to Mr. Venkatrama Raja for his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining the call. And uh, so, yes, this quarter has been a little challenging for all of us, and uh, I think the main reason has been said in the. Uh, press releases because of the heavy lockdown which continued in the uh, in the Asian markets, which was one of our main markets, and the European markets uh, also the decisions were uh, uh, postponed. So, which is the reason now that the markets are opening up, we are seeing stronger engagements in the various markets. So, we are also seeing much better customer interactions. So, we we believe that over the next one or two quarters. Our markets will bounce back, and uh, and the order positions and other uh, bookings will come back to normalcy and start improving. Uh, but the good news from our side is that, from a cash flow point of view, we continue to be uh, uh, be able to run all our operations without much borrowings, and it is strong because all our uh, recurring revenues are starting to go up, and other implementations are becoming. Uh, Strong. Therefore, cash flows are good, and our unbilled revenues are starting to come down. So that way, we should be in a strong position going forward. And I would like to hand over the thing to our CFO to start the proceedings. <clears throat> Thanks, Pierre. Thanks for the opening remarks. Um, I request Sandeesh to elaborate uh, the quarter operations. Then we can take the question and answer session. Sandesh, uh, thanks, thanks, Arkesi, and thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, and good evening to everyone. Uh, what I will be doing is, I think, some uh, qualitative information on the financial results uh, which we have declared. You uh, people would have gone. I think probably I will dwell upon deeper on some of the uh, uh, qualitative information and also some of the parameters which uh, our chairman alluded to. Towards that, I will be taking and probably some uh, more on the uh, plans for going forward, and then we will open this forum for the question. Uh, as last time when we met, we had indicated uh, the COVID situation in the Asia, which has uh, resulted in uh, weakness. To the quantify, also we had uh, given, which used to be our uh, uh, around. Uh, uh, 15 to 16 million dollar of order closure, which used to be from uh, Asia, which has dropped down to um, uh, a closure to 2 million, and I think that was uh, cited as one of the reasons why uh, we have had the slowdown, and we were expecting things to bounce back even in the last quarter, uh, but with the Omicron virus, I think that did not happen, uh, except for the uh, some extent late in the quarter. Uh, Australia and New Zealand started opening, but we had continued uh, weakness that perspective, which has carried on to uh, this quarter, uh, as well from the order booking perspective, which was the reason we booked uh, around 13 and odd million uh, dollar closure uh, for the quarter, which typically in the range of 24, 25 in a, uh, uh, most of the quarters in recent uh, year, we were able to close. So I think that had uh, a straight impact on our revenue, which is uh, basically uh, 17.3. Uh, I think that is the 
uh, revenue declined from previous uh, quarters to the close of $2 million. Uh, however, I think the, uh, when I touch upon the other parameters, I would like to emphasize the fundamentals uh, within uh, a company are strong, and I think it is the uh, outcome of ma uh, markets when they open. Uh, we will be very quickly uh, back to the uh, uh, range of what we would like to see, and very quickly we will be able to bounce back. Within the qualitatively, if you have to look into the order booking, uh, we had $2 million uh, closure within the total uh, new orders which we won. And uh, uh, that is usually in the range of four to five in any uh, year, we close uh, orders which are in that range. And uh, specifically in this uh, quarter, both those orders did not have any license components. Most of the orders which we closed in the uh, quarter uh, have the subscription uh, revenue embedded in that. That means our uh, recurring revenue over the period, it will increase, but we will not be having this spike. And that is the another reason where there was no uh, uh, uptick in the revenue because most of the orders what we closed and going forward also, we will be looking for uh, more of the revenue in the uh, uh, recurring and subscription-based uh, revenues. Uh, so that, that is the another reason where uh, you know, the uh, impact was uh, felt more than uh, what it is. Now on to some of the parameters. I think you know, uh, if you look into the borrowing, in the Q4 of 1920, we had the peak borrowing of 96 crores, which in the Q1 of 2021, we brought down to zero and it continued till the previous uh, quarter, and we have a slight borrowing of 9.8 crores for the current quarter, but that if you see uh, uh, to the magnitude of drop in the revenue, that is not the uh, same uh, scale it is going up, and we are very confident that uh, 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 9.8 crore also, we should be retiring from the operational perspective. We are generating uh, cash uh, to do that, and that will be our attempt to do that in uh, 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 you know this quarter. I think it should be not the big spike of uh, anything from the operational perspective. We don't expect any uh, uh, borrowing uh, unless for the some of the investment activities which we are looking for, which I will cover last part of my uh, presentation. Last couple of years, when uh, most of uh, some of the investors asked us on the uh, parameter they would like to see from the recurring revenue. And we, in the fact sheet, if you see, we have uh, now given the recurring and non-recurring bifurcation of our uh, revenue uh, so that we are able to see uh, how our uh, uh, recurring revenues are performing. I think that is uh, directly, if you see, at the uh, 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 Q3 2021, our recurring revenue were 22.92, which has gone up to 24.6 in the current quarter, which is uh, roughly 7% of the 7% um, uh, growth we have seen in the recurring revenue uh, here. And that translates roughly for the five years EAGR. I have to break down into our businesses for uh, 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 our HRP business in the recurring revenue, as it is growing around 24% EAGR. Uh, ERP is uh, uh, flat on the 4%. Uh, uh, our aviation and defense is around 16 And uh, overall for the company, it is 15% CAGR for the recurring revenue. Uh, I'm giving this uh, 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 breakup because this fact sheet uh, current uh, quarter, what we have given, that has a clear uh, breakdown of uh, uh, recurring revenue. And we will conti uh, continue for that for the coming quarters as well. And another parameter we, we had uh, shared in previous uh, two quarters, we were uh, having some difficult projects in uh, our portfolio of uh, 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 deliverables and which we uh, are uh, seeing we have got the control of most of them. And I think that is uh, 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 reflective of our internal uh, um, uh, governance and other things what we see. There we, we were having around the, uh, 15% uh, to 20% uh, difficult project that portfolio in the portfolio we have brought down to very negligible uh, to zero to 1%. And I think our attempt and effort 
to stabilize those projects are yielding. I think that uh, you will see in the coming quarter the more of the project going live and uh, 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 contributing to our uh, recurring revenue uh, as well. So, and I think from the pipeline perspective, uh, though uh, you are seeing the uh, booking pro uh, numbers what we projected, it uh, may not, uh, 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 you know, in the line what we were closing earlier, our uh, bu pipeline building up activity is continuing and it is over the last quarter also, we have over 78% uh, uh, growth, which we are uh, uh, yeah, yeah, doing it in our pipeline uh, building activity and pipeline remains uh, strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in all the geographies uh, across. And from the investment perspective, we have taken some uh, 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 very important investments which we have made in some of them, uh, uh, which we have hitherto, uh, for the last few years, we had uh, not done investment into the front end and other areas which we have recognized, and we have started those investments, and uh, those are in the, uh, relation to uh, uh, front field uh, sales and marketing uh, people in uh, uh, Germany, in Spain, uh, Japan, and U.S., we have already started in the uh, uh, quarter, as well as we have uh, floated our uh, defense organization in the U.S. to cater to our uh, global uh, defense market, which we are uh, seeing very bright spot in our pipeline, as well as we see that as the growing segment. So recognizing that, we have floated and we have invested and onboarded some uh, 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 very senior uh, 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 personnel from Army and uh, Navy uh, to take care of that business, uh, we, uh, that investment we have done in the quarter. So similarly, we will be continuing to do a few uh, investments from the front-ending perspective in the geographies which we are uh, expecting the growth to come from, uh, uh, as well in the employee and other which we have brought in our uh, 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 press release, you would see some of the investment we would have to do for the uh, employees and uh, 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 talent uh, building activity, which we will continue to do in the coming uh, uh, quarter uh, to enhance our uh, uh, skill level and also get prepared uh, for the growth which we are anticipating in coming quarters. So these all uh, things will uh, uh, take a couple of quarters we are anticipating to start uh, reflecting uh, in all this uh, rebuild activity and uh, uh, for us to be back on the consistent uh, uh, growth which uh, is uh, ex expected from us. I think I will uh, 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 probably uh, hand it over back to RKC and if there are any other uh, parameters you would like to cover or we open to uh, you know, question and answer and we will uh, look forward for interactions from you. Uh, thanks, Anish. There's a comprehensive uh, description of the <clears throat> what the quarter we have done in the quarter and the steps to what we are contemplating. And probably we will hand over this to Anmol uh, to facilitate the questions from the investors. Anmol? Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may enter star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of TVK Vivek Kumar from Best Pals Research and Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I have few questions. I've been invested in Ramco in the last five years. So are we, like, because post-COVID, the understanding is that there's a huge tailwind for digital transformation, which, which was there, but it has got accelerated. So have we not invested in our products ahead? And that is why we are suffering and not winning enough deals and are we losing our competitive position because 
the order booking per quarter okay this quarter you can the last few quarters we can uh, give external things as reason but for a five years also you have not seen it has never crossed or grown order booking has not grown in a way uh, i don't know what was your expectations on that so i am i'm just asking from a positioning perspective are we losing the ground in the market and that is why because we didn't invest ahead of what is required to really go and uh, win the orders that is my first question second question is how is your uh, how are you uh, tackling the challenge on the uh, talent that uh, could be a, be a supply problem in the talent these two questions sir i'll take the question i'll take the question uh, yes yeah, uh, it's a good question i said uh, basically uh, the important point to say is that we have invested ahead in our products but the kind of products we are making uh, basically takes some time to mature because they are all highly complex products it takes many years to develop many of these products but we have invested ahead and we continue to invest ahead in the technology upgradation and so on like in the press release i have also said that we are in- investing heavily on a uh, technology upgrade also so which will take a year or so to reflect on all the product lines so this is a very big product but the, the but i think the important point is i think we didn't really uh, invest too much in the markets basically i think we were going step by step in the various markets rather than aggressively trying for growth we were trying to go systematically in the markets and i think the, we have now reached a point where we have very strong processes and and uh, people in place that's why i think over the next quarter or so we start accelerating for further growth but the important point was many of these major products are going through very important implementations which are which are going to be uh, milestones in each of these industries and these implementations do take a year or two and many people are watching on how we are going to perform on these implementations the good news is many of these implementations are going quite well so i think that will be a turning point once these implementations go live in the next quarter or two that will be a big turning point in in the inflection point is what we think so it is not that we did not invest and uh, i'm sorry i missed your second question what is the second question ah so so uh, when i say invest i'm not just in the product in the front end or maybe we had issues like customer uh, nps score issues like in the sense we we did we didn't handle our implementation <laughs> properly so uh, i was just trying to understand where did we not get the things right or things are right and just is not just getting reflected so i just wanted to understand that are we what are the competitive yeah, positioning yeah. in the among all the products yeah so i think our products are strong i think what happened uh, in the previous years was i think we had shortage of resources i think we were trying to manage with uh, less resources which hurt us a bit which did affect our nps scores Bit. but that has been corrected very strongly over the last uh, few quarters and that is starting to reflect in our cash flows and things like that and and it's also starting to reflect in our uh, pipeline active pipeline is much higher than ever before you know? but the but the issue is you know the decisions have been been getting postponed and like i also told you there are two three critical very important large implementations going on which will become the benchmark for other people to order a lot of customers are looking at it because these sort of implementations have not been done before so so we are at a critical point where you know uh, we know that a lot of things are going to happen and implementation is going well but it's just that uh, uh, it probably take a year, quarter or two from the talent side yes like all companies we have faced a, a problem of attrition and so on which also affected our, our go live but what we have done is we have taken stock of the situation and we started correcting uh, any anomalies in the structure and in our hr practices and so on and we are also taking a hard look at our entire structure of compensation and and talent retention and we are going to make major changes uh, in the coming month maybe in the first quarter of uh, next year uh, already major changes have been made and also major restructuring will be done the first uh, the first quarter of next year and also important or the good news is also a lot of people are now joining us very good people talent has started to join us now again and that is also reflecting in our uh, 
customer scores which have started improving dramatically. So it's okay. a major, it's a restructuring happening, definitely. So you're confident that you're not lost or positioning in the market across our products? You are very really confident of kind of product we are doing is basically large transformation products and very, uh, very critical products. And there are not too many companies in the world doing that. The point is, how do we scale this? Rather than doing it in a very small level, how do we scale this? That way, if you see a, a HR payroll business, that is scaling quite well. And, and the partnership with our majors uh, is starting to work well. And the problem is, the last one or two quarters, many of them also didn't close too many orders in these areas. Only now the decisions are starting to get made. That is one. But also, the, uh, the geopolitical situation is also very tense worldwide. And we do depend on uh, uh, international uh, businesses making decisions quickly. So this has affected us, but we feel that the whole thing is starting to accelerate. I mean, the engagements have become much stronger this quarter, and we expect that to start yielding, yielding results at least one or two quarters down the road. So when, so when, so this is our last question. So when will we go back to the 25, 24 million bookings? How many quarters we are far away in the sense of your understanding? I understand that depends on how markets open up, but we are already. I think, I think, at least. At least one or at least two quarters is what I feel. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Before we take our next question, we'd like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter star and one. The next question is from the line of Rohit Balakrishnan from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, a bit feeble. You can speak a bit louder. Okay. Uh, is it better now, sir? Better now, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so, sir, uh, I had a few questions. And, uh, one was in terms of your uh, partnership with Workday and Oracle. You can give some update on that. Uh, we were quite uh, positive around that, and, and, and we were hoping that we be a big road driver for us. So we can just talk a bit around that. Uh, second question was that we had in the last one call had talked a bit about a lot of changes that we are trying to do internally uh, from our uh, from our uh, positioning, uh, from our from the way we pitch, especially investing in experts, etc. So we can just talk a bit around that. Uh, Third was, sir, I mean, uh, if you go back uh, four years back also, I think uh, in one of the calls, uh, this question was asked to you when you were very uh, positive on your HR business and not so positive on the aerospace and defense business. But, the, but from a reported point of view, uh, from a reported numbers point of view, HR business has been flat. And I think you explained this also that maybe because it's moving away from license to uh, uh, cloud. Uh, my, uh, so I just want to uh, get your perspective on how do you see from the from the next three four years viewpoint, how do you see your business which changing, uh, especially now that in aerospace and defense you have sort of been uh, growing at a decent clip. Uh, so these are my three questions. Sir. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, Sandesh, maybe you can take them through how the workday and Oracle thing is going through sure. and also the growth of the uh, HRT business and things like that and then we can take the difference next step. Uh, we were uh, uh, informing this woman, I think you know from the uh, 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 accelerated way what we wanted to grow, these two relationships we have put in uh, uh, focus and I think you know uh, we did inform that we started building the uh, certified connector between both of these organizations so that our joint and common customers are able to uh, get benefit out of that. I think if for de December 20 to December 2021, we have to see our uh, combined pipeline uh, from both of these has uh, you know uh, grown around 40%. Uh, 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 year on year, pipeline from Workday and uh, uh, Oracle combined. That is the growth we have seen. And we have also seen some of the closures in the uh, Q2. Q3, however, there was a bit of, as we said, 
uh, 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 slow nature, but I think we are expecting good closure coming from uh, uh, partners uh, uh, like Oracle and uh, uh, Workday. And in all geography, we have started the traction. It started in the uh, US and ANZ, and now we are able to see in uh, Asia, even in the Europe and uh, uh, um, uh, Asia, uh, sorry, uh, Middle East, we have seen the traction. So it is now all across company, we are seeing uh, all geographies, this uh, momentum is picking up. It is not uh, limited to any one or two geographies. From where we started, it is now uh, all across company. So that only gives us the confidence. I think our relationship is strengthening uh, uh, across and we are uh, some of the investment which we spoke about earlier, we are uh, putting it in uh, alliances, managing these partners in the geographies where we are uh, seeing aggressive growth uh, coming in areas of uh, uh, ANZ and also in the uh, Asia and US uh, for nurturing this relationship. I think that is the, uh, you know, uh, saw, and I think your observation on the uh, uh, HRP business I think that is, uh, though it is looking flat, the underlying numbers, if you see, there is the reason we have given the recurring revenue in the current uh, uh, quarter. And that is, as I said, it is on around 24, recurring revenue growth is around 24% uh, CAGR for the HRP business in the last five years. So I think we know uh, more and more deals when we start moving and going live, our uh, attempt is to actually uh, in, in increase uh, pipeline closure and as well as go live in this area to show higher number here and that is what we are looking because this is one of the uh, most comprehensive investment in the past few years we have done building over, five, uh, over 60 countries payroll on our platform and then building uh, this kind of relationship and also ecosystems of the uh, top consulting firms uh, whereas a couple of consulting firms already have taken our platform and have reached to around 60, 70,000 pay slips uh, uh, being generated and they are looking to grow over 100,000. So all the ingredients, whatever we had worked on, have started showing here. And I think, you know, from that perspective, we are still bullish on this uh, uh, um, um, uh, product line and uh, we are seeing growth coming into uh, HRP. Uh, especially uh, uh, because of the uh, relationship which we have uh, formed. Uh, that, that is, with, with, uh, I hope I answered your option on Oracle and the uh, growth from the HRP, what we are looking for. Yeah, yeah, right. And there are some third question, which was, uh, I think, you know, it was related to EAD, if you can please, uh, I was not able to, it was not clear. Yeah, so I had just other two other questions that I had, but like in terms of my last con call also, we talked a bit about uh, how we are sort of reorganizing internally, uh, whether it is in terms of uh, the processes or investing in uh, exports, etc. So if you can just talk a bit about that, uh, that was one. And second was in terms of uh, Aerospace and defense of three years back, we were not uh, very bullish, and, and now we are at a very strong uh, position. So from here on, how do we see that business, given that also very lumpy business? So, yeah. See, from, I will answer the last one. I think the aerospace defense area, our uh, uh, reason for investing there, what we saw in the last... Uh, uh, year or so, year, uh, defense service provided in the U.S., uh, 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 so we had some good programs in the U.S. Uh, defense. We started working uh, through the U.S. defense contractors who were taking our product to service to the uh, U.S. defense. And that was a good pro a proportion of our uh, of the closures in the last year and early part of the uh, this year as well. And that prompted to actually take the comprehensive review of opportunity and what we have to uh, look for and uh, uh, pipeline. And we were uh, piloting to see whether we can directly work with uh, U.S. defense uh, and increase our portfolio and then take it all across the globe into the uh, defense market. Because I think, you know, 
our AAD, Aviation and Defense uh, Revenue, what you see, mostly it was predominantly, it was on the commercial side. And this opportunity posed to us in the last uh, year or so, and that is much bigger opportunity, and we wanted to uh, really uh, be in that space. And uh, we uh, saw that as an opportunity to invest and grow our business significantly. I think that's the reason now we have floated our company uh, in U.S. because that's required. Just not the software, but the people with the U.S. national uh, and security cleared and multiple other things required so that the company required to be uh, 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 made conducive to work with the uh, defense organization. And uh, that was the procedural uh, work which we had to do and also get uh, uh, proper team and uh, others to uh, head that, which we have done. So basically, it was on the back of some of the growth uh, uh, prospects which we saw. I are confident that will start. It will take usually uh, a few quarters, you know, uh, maybe two to three quarters or a little more for the defense to uh, uh, show really high growth. And we are confident it should uh, work towards with the kind of investment we have made and probably furthermore, some investment we'll be making there. And we are seeing already in the pipeline, the, um, uh, uh, our, our, our EAD's pipeline is consisting around the 30% of the uh, defense-related uh, inquiry, which is what is uh, uh, in our pipeline. So from that perspective, it is looking, we are on the right direction and uh, uh, enough um, uh, uh, done to see that this investment uh, yield result what we are looking for. Okay. And, and so one more question I had. We had a lot of write-offs uh, due to our uh, old project. So have those been, have those been completely bandwidth or uh, uh, there could be more in the coming quarters? No, it has not been completely done with. Like we said last quarter, last quarter, call itself. A lot of these things are because of our trouble. Some of them are because of some troubled implementations. Some of them customers pulled back and so on. And uh, some of them we are trying to uh, work with the customers to make sure that we can, they can uh, continue with it or, or whether they will restart the project. We are waiting for that. So I think the right house will continue for a few more quarters. Okay, can you broadly give us uh, idea will it be this one, like next three, four quarters or three less or four more? Quarters, yeah. Four quarters. Okay. Oh, oh maybe I think. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be about four to five quarters. It depends on how the customer. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Sadiq Imam, an individual investor. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I would like to ask uh, whether uh, the kind of digital growth we are seeing in other company, whether we will be able to emulate that one in our company in the coming next three to five years, because digital transformation is a huge opportunity, but uh, we are not able to see in our uh, uh, Ramco systems. Uh, yes, so what you yes, you have not been able to see that. I think the important point is. The kind of digital transformation we are doing is more detailed and on a larger scale, for which we have to build the organization capacity to uh, assimilate that kind of growth and which we started building. And the hope is that we start uh, seeing very good growth because uh, the products we have are unique and, uh, and, and many of the critical projects are going live in the next oh, quarter or so from which I think there'll be a form of very good platform for us to start growing. So we'll, but our growth 
trajectory and the kind of growth we have will be different from uh, single product companies. Uh, they have a different uh, dynamic. We'll have a different dynamic. But uh, sir, we will be hitting the high growth path uh, in future, sir. That's what we want to. That's what we are working towards. But I wish I can predict. But we are working towards how do we get the high growth? That is our aim. That is the investment. That is our aim. And and that is what we want. That's all I can say. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Rahul Jain from Dalat Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. The first question is on this uh, unexecuted order. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Mr. Jain, if you're on a hands free or something, can you switch it to handset and speak? Your audio is a bit muffled. Uh, just give me one uh, is it any better? Rahul, you may have to speak a bit louder. <clears throat> okay, I uh, I tried to try and do that. So uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. So uh, the unexecuted order book, uh, which we have seen, uh, been in that uh, 180, 190. Uh, kind of a zone for very long period of time and uh, it's up for the 160 for more than five years now since we started sharing this data. So uh, can you share why uh, you know these revenues are never culminating uh, this uh, you know unexecuted book is not culminating into revenue is there a need for revisiting this number because uh, since inception, we've been talking that this has an average tenure of anywhere between three to four years. Uh, but uh, our revenue has never scaled beyond $90 million, but this number continues to stay in this uh, zone. Ideally, uh, what is your unexecuted book should become your revenue in a couple of years, but uh, we are nowhere near that. So any reason why it's not culminating and how one should read this? Uh, actually, there are two reasons. I don't think so that is the right uh, this one. I think the, if you see the reason why the unexecuted order book is there, the total order what we find typically is in the range of uh, uh, four to five years, the deal. In, uh, m mostly, most of them are five-year deals, what we find with the customer. And in that, usually it is uh, uh, depending upon what line of product we are implementing, three to six months in case of HRP and some of the large, very large HRP also goes for year or so. And aviation and ERP transformation, what we are talking is a complex uh, work which we undertake. So they are in the range of uh, uh, eight to nine months to 11 to 12 months also and sometime higher. So beyond that, that is for the four years, recurring revenue which continues and uh, every year uh, we take out. So if you Take that in currently our December unexecuted order book is in around 180 million. And I think if you see that with the revenue, I think, you know, uh, take it around the uh, RTC that is around uh, 30 to 50 percent we will consume in a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So from that perspective, it will continue to be in the range. The growth when we this unexecuted order book will continue to grow, and that is how we will also start seeing the increase in the revenue. So it may not come down. It will only continue to grow uh, to support our growth, because I think that is like the uh, cash in bank. You know, I think we have around $85 million, which we will consume in next uh, uh, four years. Uh, that is how I will look into, and uh, uh, that is a safe deposit which is there. And I would like to increase it also. Continuously, we are going. And uh, some areas where we had, we were not able to uh, convert that into recurring revenue, which which we looks like we have overcome. I think uh, our chairman also uh, alluded to the fact that I think you know we had some uh, this one, and we are seeing the improvement. And uh, uh, some troubles. One, what we are talking last quarter was uh, very good from that perspective. We did not had any uh, addition to our troubled. Uh, customer list. Uh, so from that perspective, we are on right track. We have uh, looks like got a control on uh, those, and it uh, uh, only means we will start consuming 
uh, and converting this unexecuted into more into the uh, you know uh, billable revenue and uh, uh, hopefully we will add uh, that more because i think from 189 million it came down to 185 million in the last quarter uh, ideally we would like to see that going up uh, to give um, a healthy base for us to uh, have a predictable revenue I mean, uh, 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 yes. RC, uh, and just this time, if you look at the fact sheet, we have read on the <clears throat> revenue stream. If you see the recurring revenue you take for the quarter, it is the recurring revenue, 8.5 million. This recurring revenue is flowing out of the unexecuted order book. See, we had 189 million of last year, last quarter unexecuted order book. Out of that, only this uh, emanates. Similarly, the service uh, revenue, which is uh, we have shown the non recurring. 7 million. This is also from the unexecuted order book. See, that way from the unexecuted order book, assuming that you are, we have not got any order this quarter, we have, we have got only 15 million revenue. So that is why if you are saying from the last quarter to this quarter, the unexecuted order book has come down because our order is lower and the revenue flowing from the unexecuted order book is higher. Yeah, I mean, uh, just simply going by math, uh, of five years, and if this number was 160 million five years back, and even if you attribute 20% of the revenue for next subsequent five years, uh, for every unexecuted order book of the past year, we should have crossed this number uh, on much higher uh, side. I don't know, uh, maybe I can take this offline, but ideally, mathematically, this number should have been higher, assuming we are actually executing what uh, was unexecuted five years back over a period of time. Uh, maybe we can we can actually have a look at all this. Maybe RKC can take you through that, what we have executed and so on. Sure. 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 Secondly, we've been uh, talking about this, uh, you know, a problem with Asia and other market uh, restriction and all that, and which is hampering uh, the booking and all. Is it more to do with uh, the talent which we might have missed on the? Uh, on the on-site, which is causing this impact, because uh, I mean, we have not seen, uh, we have not come across any company who is not doing good now versus what uh, they should have. Uh, so most of the companies have seen impact in the first two, three quarters of COVID, and not uh, you know six quarters after the COVID started. So if there was a restriction, I think uh, the severest of the restriction were. Uh, six quarters back, uh, but we did far better in those period versus what we are doing now. So I don't know how this restriction of travel hampers the revenue now more than what it used to be four or five quarters back. Because at that time, uh, many of the negotiations, decisions, touch points, everything were done. The orders were just coming in. But then to create new leads and to create new uh, orders, uh, we, we were not able to have travel. And many of the implementation also we had to do completely remotely. We could not travel to those places. So given all that, you know, uh, we had a dramatic slowdown in these last two quarters. But the, the engagements have started improving uh, quite well again now. So we think it should uh, bounce back. Okay. I mean, uh, with the kind of business we are in, the kind of technology that we are involved into, it's very difficult to digest that uh, these kind of things are troubling to us uh, so much. I I may understand possibly at a client uh, perspective, uh, they may not be as mature in terms of technology to deal with it, but we are seeing uh, traction. I don't see uh, the uh, HR uh, software around the world is not getting sold because of this factor. Uh, I'm, I don't for, know, us, uh, the booking, uh, yeah, for us, the booking, the decisions were just not made. We, we, are, we, are, not, we are unable to explain it either. But uh, the decisions were just not made and our people were not able to go meet customers. But it's, uh, but definitely it's not because of uh, perhaps you losing out uh, important people on the onset who were driving your sales. It's not because of that. Uh, that's what it is. We did lose some people, but we have... Uh, we have put uh, the people back, but I don't think the reason is because of that. Okay. In your uh, press release, there was one mention that we may have to continuously invest in the platform and uh, also on the comp side or on the talent side. 
uh, with those things, uh, you know, uh, uh, going to happen in the coming quarter. And from a revenue visibility point of view, we, we may probably take a couple of quarters to uh, before we reach the uh, benefit. We reap the benefit of some of the uh, good things that that are shaping up in the business. Uh, can we say that ki we may continue to incur uh, losses for next couple of quarters? I mean, uh, maybe, I mean, uh, we, we would not want to, but I think the level of losses can come down or break even. That's what we are aiming for. We'll have to see how it goes. Because again, if you see the kind of orders we get are very lumpy. If, if in one quarter I get a big order, then everything, you know, is taken care of. And two, three big orders have been postponed also. So like that, so it is very difficult to predict. So given a few, uh, that is, you know, it's a, it's a conference and, you know, we have, we, I cannot commit this way or that way. That is the problem. Right. Maybe uh, two other way, uh, what are the cost increases uh, on a uh, on the run rate basis we see versus what we have in December? Uh, what could be the cost increase in uh, next quarter or next couple of quarters that we have already planned? See, because of investments in technology, uh, it's not going to be of course, it's already, it's basically the, the restructuring and salary costs which are, have to change because of the market changing. That will be the impact. And then we are still working that out. Once, that, uh, once we know exactly what it is, maybe we can share it with all of you. But uh, that restructuring of the salary and compensation structure and everything, because the markets have dramatically changed, that will be the uh, that will be the main impact. Other than that, I don't see anything. Right, right. And l just lastly, if I could squeeze in one more uh, on the Oracle uh, and uh, Workday side, I think Sandeep said nothing much happened uh, in this quarter. But your pipeline in general is up. Uh, so is there and yeah. yeah so is there uh, is there something that uh, is uh, you know a kind of uh, you know uh, anything that can shape up in uh, q4 q1 kind of a period uh, which we can say okay, okay yes these things are falling in place and now the momentum should come from that pipeline into revenue conversion or will still that be uh, a subset of the this uh, travel restriction kind of an impact, uh, which we will see uh, as long as that persists? So I think uh, maybe we start seeing some changes in the quarter one, is what I would say. So this quarter also has uh, only now people have started talking and all those things, and these uh, times for our orders are usually four to five months. So that's why we're not able to exactly predict when. Uh, once we start engagement and people start seriously saying, yes, we like your product and we want to buy the product and all those things, usually it's about two, three months before they, we finally get the order on hand. That's why not we're able to give you exact timing. That's why we keep saying maybe in a quarter or so. So I think we'll start seeing some good traction maybe in quarter one is, is, is our hunch. Yeah. But the good news is the interactions are very strong, starting to get very strong. Our interaction with Oracle, Workday, and all that are strong, and they and they like our products and so on. So qualitatively, yes, we can say it's doing well. Got it. Got it. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Bharat Sheikh from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope uh, I'm audible. Yes, Bharat. Yes. Yes, but yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so taking two questions, I mean, that we were working to improve this uh, implementation time, uh, reducing from say earlier uh, several quarters to for this particularly logistic as well as on the defense and ERP side. So can you give some color? Because HRC, we have been able to uh, implement much faster. So where what stage we are yeah and uh, yeah i can answer that if you take uh, hrp products our implementation times uh, uh, were much longer maybe eight months nine months and so on now we are able to cut it down to about uh, three months 
usually. You know, I'm just giving you an average figure. If it's a very large implementation across multiple countries, it may take more time. But the, but the time to implementation has been cut by more than half in HRC. In aviation and other businesses, uh, implementations have been cut down by 20, uh, 10, 20%, but many of these implementations are also uh, a lot of work with a customer and complex new logic being built and so on. So there we cannot really measure. But the where we can really measure uh, where we have to analyze and practice and go on is an HRP. And that has improved, and the same methodology is now being followed by all SBUs. So we can definitely see a dramatic improvement in the implementation time. Uh, that's, that's it. Okay. Sir, so on check and uh, on, uh, we have uh, not marketing logistic or ERP for quite some time, as you say. But uh, there no, is a strong tool. So yes. We are marketing our ERP very well. But the okay. point is we are, marketing, uh, we are marketing it to large companies. And the decision makings are quite, for example, uh, we, we, we made a very large implementation and also press review was gone on DLS. That's one of the largest, one of the most complex and largest implementations, which we are very proud of. And we continue to work with them to get the second phase going. We are doing we are similar implementations we are doing in two, three large conglomerates in India and abroad. So we are actively selling large digital transformations where the entire system gets transformed by our product. So the, the time to fail takes a little longer with these things. <coughs> but we are effectively actively selling ERP. In the logistics side, <coughs> you may have heard that we are not marketing logistics. That's also not correct. What we okay. said was we are we have what we have taken a, a lot of orders that come in. We are capacity limited, so we want to make sure that these fundamental uh, projects which we've taken are, are executed very well before we start taking more orders. And I think from this quarter onwards, we're starting to initiate getting more orders for that. Which is okay. The next question. Okay, and last uh, on our press release, we stated some of the deal uh, deferment uh, has happened, uh, decision making. So, is it yes. possible to get some kind of a color or quantitatively or qualitatively how many such deal and what is the value of such deal and which uh, vertical? See, some of the verticals are <coughs> both defense, HRP, and ERP. <laughs> we had postponement. Some of them, but some of the smaller ones are probably getting decided this quarter. For the larger ones, I believe maybe maybe slip to one of one of the Okay. Thank you very much and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Manoj Dua from Geometric. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, can you throw some light on the, uh, you have mentioned in the annual report that we are uh, doing faster implementation because of AI and that would be very useful for the company. Uh, how we are, uh, can you throw some light into that? Yeah, basically uh, this whole technology we are working, which we are taking into various SPUs. Like I said in the previous question, we are, we are employing this at the full level in uh, uh, HRP and payroll business. Because that is where we have large number of projects going on at any one time. At any one time, whether it's small or big, altogether, we are doing 300 plus projects going on in various parts of the world. And 70% and, uh, of them are uh, these uh, HRP implementations. And uh, there we were taking time with lack of people and so on. And uh, now with, uh, with full automation, and, and we did a lot of work over the last year, and so on, uh, our implementation is getting more and more automated. And some of them use uh, machine learning principles to make sure that we automatically know how to configure a, a country or a company or a vertical and so on. That's, what, that's probably what was mentioned. Okay. Uh, can you also throw some more color when you said that our journey for digital transformation of the customer would be different than 
uh, other companies because we have more uh, detailed product. Can you throw some more light into that? How it will be more different? Uh, how to understand better the statement? Again, if you uh, again digital transformation is a very loosely termed word. That's why I said it could be different because many people think you know that if you uh, put everything in mobile and you put chat box and you know you have many of these uh, things uh, put on the peripheral uh, and and uh, we enter everything through phones and all that we have digitally transferred but the kind of digital transformation we give a company is can they be completely online can they run their com company in real time am i able to get my profit and loss account in real time can i see my profit and loss account as of today what is my cash flow what are the what is happening in every part of the company and I see which equipment is running, what is the problem, what is the power consumption at this point in time. Can I benchmark across my factories continuously and continuously control my company? This is what we mean by complete digital transformation and real-time uh, control. And that is what we are offering companies. And this concept is a concept which very pe people find it hard to believe. We, are showing, we have shown one or two companies, now more companies are looking at it. But when they make these big decisions, they have to give up many of the existing software they have. So they, so that's why it takes time. But the momentum, but we now we, what we are doing is because we cannot wait indefinitely. We are giving part of it. So that is why I said our digital transformation is very different. Okay. Uh, so what I understood from the, all the questions by previous participants and your answer, that because of some problems the company uh, because of covid problem somewhere we, we are at the inflection stage so some of all parts can we assume uh, going forward three four quarter most of these problems uh, which are covid related and where, where we are near to the implementation getting orders so we can revisit as an investor after three four quarters where we are that will be the right most time to understand the company uh, yes, maybe, maybe maybe in two quarters or three quarters Okay, thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the floor back to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. So I'd like to thank everybody for all the wonderful questions. I think the questions were very uh, deep and very insightful. And uh, we try to give the best answers we can. Because uh, and and I hope that all the measures we have put together will help us, you know, reach the goal we have set out to. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Dam Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.